Last round at Interlagos saw some of the best racing we've seen in this series to date. But now it's time to crown our Season 2 champion at two of the world's most legendary circuits. Welcome to the final round of Speed Week E-Series, powered by Gran Turismo Sport and PlayStation 4. Season 2 has seen complete dominance by our pro gamers, with Adam Wilk and Joseph De Jesus the leading figures across our previous three rounds. Wilk's superiority in qualifying and a clean sweep at Interlagos sees him leading the overall standings on 184 points. 35 clear of De Jesus on 149, but with 66 points on offer for the final round, De Jesus can still win if Wilk encounters serious drama. For this round, we visit two of the world's most iconic circuits. Race one will be at held at the Monza circuit in Italy, this time bypassing the first chicane approaching the Curva Grande. For race two, our final race of this series, we return to the holy grail of Australian motor racing, Mount Panorama Bathurst. It's set to be a cracking final round as the $5,000 first prize and the Speed Week E-Series trophy awaits our soon-to-be champion. Who will it be? We're about to find out. Hey, my name's Craig Woods. I drive in the ECB Super Ute Series in the Toyota Hilux for Western Sydney Motorsport. Today, we get the Speed Week E-Series in the F-Type Jaguar GT3. Hi, I'm Josh Anderson. 19 years old, I'm driving the RDA brake Chev Camaro in the Aussie Racing Car Series and in the Speed Week Gear Series I'm driving the Mercedes AMG GT3. Hi my name's Chelsea Angelo, I'm 22 years old, I recently competed in the Porsche Michelin GT3 Cup Challenge Series and in the Speed Week E Series Championship I'm racing in the Lexus RCF GT3. Hi, I'm Liam Talbot, I'm racing in the Porsche Carrera Cup with Wall Racing and today I'm here in the Porsche 911 RSR. G'day, my name's Adam Wilk. I'm 27 from Sydney. I've been sim racing for about two years and my latest accomplishment was actually at the 2019 FIA GT Championships. I'm competing at the Speed Week E-Series and I'll be driving the Ford Mustang GT3. Hi, my name is Joseph De Jesus IV. I'm 29 years old and I'm from Brisbane. Uh, my latest achievement was that I participated in the FIA Certified GT Sport World Finals in Monaco and I'm driving the BMW M6 GT3 in the Speed Week E-Series. My name is Gopi Mahindajit. I'm 20 years old from Melbourne and I'm an engineering student at RMIT University. This is the first time I've been invited to a professional sim racing competition here at the Speed Week E-Series. Today I'll be driving the Nissan GTR GT3. Hi, I'm Anthony Huey. I'm 25 from Camden, New South Wales. I'm a professional sim racer. I placed fourth in the Australian GT Series and I'm driving the Subaru WRX. Let's take a look at the qualifying highlights of this race now at Monza, the world famous Monza circuit. And Gopi Mahindajit goes into third position for this round, 139.49 aboard the Nissan GTR. Should be really strong at this round. Joseph De Jesus, another front row position for the BMW, 138.934. But again, it's pole position to the Mustang of Adam Wilk, who continues his domination of this Speed Week E-Series, a 138.271 and looks likely in the box seat coming into the final two races, the final round of this year's Speed Week E-Series. Pole position by a huge margin, over six tenths of a second to De Jesus. Mahindajit in third, Anderson fourth, Anthony Huey back to Woods, Angelo and Talbot as we get set for race number one here at the world famous Monza circuit. Justin Ruggi is alongside me, $5,000 up for grabs, a trophy, but my goodness me, we've got some racing to come. Adam Wilk looks, looks like he's in the box seat here. He's just so confident at the moment, it's going to be hard to beat him, but uh, five grand, big money. Drivers getting set, locking into position and ready for the final combat. We're racing on the Monza circuit. Now, Monza, we know over the years, hard stops, long straights. We've taken a chicane out of this race. So this is going to be very interesting. We look at the front row. Normally, the main straight's 1.1 kilometres long. It's probably another half a K longer in this race. The lights go out here. And Josh Anderson gets another strong start aboard that Mercedes. Man, he was impressive over the Interlagos circuit. Moves up into second place straight away. That's what kept him in the game the last race was his start. So it's, it's great to see him doing it again. Slipstreaming is going to be king here. The GTR has hung out to dry here. Through the right-hander for the first time and down towards the first chicane, the first real hard stop. Oh, the bump and grind begins. Big bump now into the chicane, it's on. 
And that's what happens when you have a long straight and a really tight corner, isn't it? <laughs> there was brewing pretty much when they took off from the start line. And that now jumbles up the field. Talbot makes up a spot in the Porsche 911. We look at Huey. Oh, no, he doesn't. He goes off into the gravel. Cold tyres, it looks like. Was that Liam that went off? Yeah, the two Lesmo Bens, they really are tight corners. These corners were tightened up in the late 90s. And again, another spinner off in the background. This race is going off, and it's only the opening lap. And again, you can see Adam, you know, his eyes on the prize. He's just taken off in the distance. So Di Jesus, for the second race in succession, has spun out of contention. He drove well at Interlagos to go from eighth and maybe 15 seconds behind to finish in fourth. You look from Craig Woods as we head down the long straight towards the Parabolica for the first of three laps. Anthony Huey, fourth position, a strong showing from the Subaru. Expect the Jag to stretch the legs. This is the horsepower friendly circuit. From this point onwards, 100% throttle till we get to the first chicane, and that's nearly two kilometres away. Yeah, it's a long way down this straight, and I think, you know, for, for Anthony, just getting that slipstream, try and catch Josh. Josh needs to catch Adam. It's the name of the game. Here he is. Has he gone too soon? Remember, it's a sweeper. We don't stop for the chicane. You'll see it appear. They'll go straight past it. And again, you know, from my perspective, I probably wouldn't have uh, got out of the slipstream, but I would have waited to the next corner to do the job. Just shows you, doesn't it? He came out just before the finish line, and they're right on the edge. Anderson is just ahead of this group of cars, but Adam Wilk, who's led this series from the start of season number two, is disappearing around this Monza circuit. And as a racer, you know, confidence is so important. Adam's showing all them attributes, you know, he's confident, he's consistent, he's fast. And, you know, he's brought Josh and a few others to, to sort of his oh, level, but... It's Anderson. It's Anderson, who now will fall back into the clutches of these guys. And now a three-car battle. Woods gives him a bit of a hurry-up. This is not the Aussie racing cars. <laughs> I'll put the curse on him. <laughs> gives him another push. It's Huey this time in the Subaru. So Anderson, one little mistake was costly. And again, you know, in a championship battle, uh, five grand's on the line. And again, they keep battling and battling and they keep letting Adam get away and he's, he's, just, he's just too good at the moment. He's been a class act, that Mustang. You can see it just turning into a little dot as he makes his way towards the Parabolica. Josh Anderson, focused as ever. But my goodness, has he got some challenges right in his tail now. Down into the right hand of the world famous Parabolica. And looking at his throttle pickup then, uh, you know, he's definitely trying to maximize the exit, not to be vulnerable. Oh, Woods has gone off in the background somehow. So the Jag is missing from that shot. We saw him disappear at the Parabolica. So he's dropped a ton of space for these two guys. And you can't afford to do that here in Monza. I think, you know, when he looks back at this, probably going to want to... Maybe he's very aggressive. He's very aggressive on a, on a racetrack. And uh, it's obviously not working out for him here. Not today, anyway. This is Huey on the back of Anderson. Battle for second and third. Forget about our race leader. He is gone on this second lap. And down towards the chicane. So Woods tries to fight back on the GTR. It's like a monster in the middle of the circuit, doesn't it? The guy's moving around oh, everywhere. He's off the circuit, though. That's the second time you've cursed a driver today. <laughs> Justin Ruggia is alongside me for this one. Professional racer, professional sim racer as well. Getting some feedback on how this series goes. The Speedweek E-Series powered by Gran Turismo Sport and PlayStation 4. You're looking back from Josh Anderson. Yeah, again, you know, now, you know, this is final lap. It's interesting, we'll see what happens with Josh, but he needs to keep calm and, and not look in the mirror. A little bit different this time too, just the one race at Monza. We're heading to Mount Panorama for the final race of this year's Speedweek E-Series. As now, they stay side by side. The GTR trying to fight back down at the chicane. Gets a bump for good measure. Chelsea picked up the throttle really early there, and that's where she made slight contact. The view from Angelo. Running back in sixth position, Talbot and De Jesus right at the back of this field. But at the front of the field, it's Adam Wilk who takes another checkered flag. The three lap sprint race around Monza and he collects another victory. Fist pumps in the sky. He knows the series crown is almost his with one race to go. Second and third was on and it's on again for the Miners. Here comes the GTR, bump and grind at the finish line. Love that aggression. Wow. We'll see what the tail of the tape says on the results graphic. We know that Adam Wilk has won this race by probably one of the biggest margins we've seen so far. He is just pro plus 
in this season and does it by a whopping 7.2 seconds. Back to Anderson, Huey, Woods and Angelo, who got fifth position by less than a tenth on Mahindajit, Liam Talbot and De Jesus the fourth finishes in eighth position. Yeah, I was definitely uh, very worried about that, that corner because I saw a big angry pack behind me and I was very thankful to survive. All these first corners turned out to be, uh, have a few victims with them, so I hope I'm not the next victim. I got like a four second penalty in the first lap. So I spent the whole race trying to clear that, to be honest, um, and then just having good battles. I had a bit of problem with the straight line speed, but luckily I was able to keep in the toe with everyone else and um, everyone had a bit of issues in front of me. So I was able to keep up well and go through everyone else. Yeah, fourth was good. I think I thought we probably had the pace to finish second, but a few things didn't go away in the race. Awesome racing with the drafting and the passing, and that track was pretty cool for those cars. Time for a very short break here on the Speed Week E Series, but as we head there, let's learn about one more of our drivers. Here's Gopi Mahindajit. My name is Gopi Mahindajit. I'm 20 years old from Melbourne and I'm an engineering student at RMIT University. This is the first time I've been invited to a professional sim racing competition here at the Speedweek E-Series. Today I'll be driving the Nissan GTR GT3. Well, initially for me, it started from yeah, just watching V8 supercars and Formula One on TV and then got a PlayStation when I was young and then started playing Gran Turismo when I was yeah, from a young age. At uni, I'm doing mechanical engineering, so it helps with you know learning how to set up a car and how to design a car as well when you know what a car needs to feel like from yeah, from a background of sim racing. Being invited to an event like this means I have potential. So yeah, also if it happens to bring up a real life racing opportunity, I'm definitely down for that. The way I see it, the pro drivers might struggle at the start, getting to grips with the, the console and the way the game handles, but I think towards the end they'll really be able to be comfortable with how the car is. Yeah, I've raced uh, Adam and Joseph quite a bit actually online, but never really yeah, raced them in person. So it'll be interesting to see how everyone goes. Yeah, Adam is probably one of the fastest in the world. So he's yeah got a good reputation for speed. So hopefully you can learn a lot from him. It should be really fun racing from lights out to the checkered flag. Hi, I'm Liam Talbot. I'm racing in the Porsche Carrera Cup with Wall Racing and today I'm here in the Porsche 911 RSR. My story is quite unique, obviously. Never followed motorsport, not a motorsport family, couldn't watch it on TV. Tried to, but after a couple laps, I'm just like, I can't, I don't understand what's going on. So, uh, no background whatsoever. Had a friend at the time that had a car and said, oh, you gotta come racing with me and I just kept dismissing it and he just kept persevering and I said, you know what, let's have a go and went faster than him, so wasn't a good start to the friendship <laughs> but uh, yeah just um, didn't know if it was for me I was just going to do a couple races and sack myself and uh, kind of got faster and might have been something there I didn't know but just had to explore it a bit further and yeah it's it's a whole new world for me and uh, I just I love racing and love motorsport. It's been a crazy journey I've had this opportunity in the GT cars it started um, 2014 and uh, just from there it's taken off beyond my wildest dreams. Racing in Europe with an Italian team and having the authentic pasta of the track with uh, the Italians cooking has just been unbelievable. And then racing a Ferrari in Italy uh, with an Italian team has just been the stuff of uh, dreams. I'm a big fan of sim racing. I think it's very important uh, when you haven't been to that track. So you don't know whether it's a fifth gear right hand corner or second gear left hand corner and that's a massive speed differential. So imagine uh, if you can do the laps on the simulator before you get there, you've got this muscle memory, you know, the uh, rough braking markers, you know, roughly what gear you're going to be in for that corner. So there's this inbuilt memory before you come to the race weekend and you get such little time on track in practice and, and qualifying. So if you can hit the ground running, so to speak, with all that track knowledge, first time there, it's invaluable. I'm just looking forward to it. I think uh, it's going to be a bit of a learning curve being on the simulator, but I think um, there's going to be some interesting uh, action on track. Hopefully I'm not the cause of it, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I think I'm the oldest guy too, so maybe, maybe they need to wind the boost up in my car or something. 
off from one iconic circuit to another. This time it's in our own backyard. It's Mount Panorama Bathurst and Josh Anderson goes third quickest this lap, 204.332, around this 6.2 kilometre circuit. Joseph D. Jesus again locks in that front row, pretty much has owned that all season long. He stopped the clocks around this world famous circuit, 202.633 for the BMW and pole position for the final round of this year's series. And it's the guy with one hand on the trophy right now, the GT Mustang of Adam Wilk, blazing around Bathurst in 202.464 to take another pole position in this Speed Week E-Series powered by Gran Turismo Sport and PlayStation 4. Locks out the front row for this final race from De Jesus, Anderson, Gopi Mahindajit from fourth, Anthony Huey from five, Chelsea Angelo out of six, Craig Woods out of seven, Liam Talbot starts out of position number eight for the final race of this year's series. With $5,000 up for grabs, the E-Series trophy, and these drivers getting set, locking into the hyperdrive simulators, and Justin Ruggier, if they're nervous, I'm more nervous because I'd love to see a fascinating race to finish off this final round. I'm nervous now, to be honest, just watching this, and uh, it should be a good race and uh, unbelievable track. You know, Bathurst is something special to me too. Flash the headlights from the front row, they mean business. Oh, the GTR goes nowhere. Gopi Mahindajit is flying back through the field here as into turn number one goes the GT in his contact already. De Jesus and Anthony Huey at Hell Corner, raising hell. You know, it's a last race. They've uh, turned each other around already. A little bit early to be doing that kind of stuff as they climb mountain straight for the first time. Chelsea Angelo on the back of Craig Woods up to the top turn. Josh Anderson runs back in a second. Oh, you get the feeling we've got an Interlagos race on our hands again. I need to speak to Josh after this actually and find out what he's doing on these starts. A bit rocket. Sure has. Up to the top, into the cutting. Looking back to the GT Mustang, Adam Wilk. Pole positions all season long and looking to wrap up this series. He can't go side by side through there. You will They're with trying. Woodsy. <laughs> yeah, Woodsy will. And just misses the wall on the left hand side. Great move though from Chelsea Angelo who moves up into third place. Oh, Woods very close to the wall. He's trying to put this car in positions that you wouldn't do in the real race car. You can see how early he turns in, you know, it's just, it's, it's really good to see. Good battle for third and fourth. They plunge down through Skyline. He's got the wall this time. That was just a matter of time. And as it dropped him back, he has to have hurt that car. And again, it's all about patience being at Bathurst. Looks like Liam's had a bit of a moment as well. He's limping down the hill in the Porsche 911. The self-confessed oldest driver in the field out there today, but he's had experience, as so have you. <laughs> yeah, this track's awesome, you know. Racing here is just something so special. You know, in front of so many people and such a driver's track too. It's such a pleasure to be around here. Down the famous Conrod Strait into the chase that was added over three decades ago now to slow speeds. Well, the speeds are still there, but it promotes another passing opportunity. First to second now, bit of a margin, but it's on between the Porsche and the Subaru side by side into the chase. I think Liam actually had a moment before in the in the uh, Forest Elbow, so uh, I don't know what's going on. This car's been a handful for him, and speaking to him before too, uh, the transition's been very, very difficult for him. Fifth and sixth on the circuit. Oh, he runs wide now, opens the door up, and now the Porsche just makes sure that he gets the job done. And he's into the wall in the background. So two hits either side, and the yellows are out. I think there might have been a bit of forced him off the track <laughs> if you had a look at that closely. There's a lot of feeling in the final race. This guy, though, absolutely in control. He climbs through Griffins and on the run to the cutting. On the second lap is Woods, still running in fourth position. And De Jesus, who's had a couple of bad races lately. He's been qualifying well, but the results haven't spoken for him. And again, you know, this is what it's all about. It's three laps. Don't need to do anything silly very early on. Unfortunately, with Joseph, he's been caught up in a lot of other things. And unfortunately, he's back in fifth place. Oh, that was an easy move for him there. When Craig Woods snaps sideways in the BMW, gets in before Sulman Park and goes up another spot into fourth as he got time to chase down the likes of Angelo Anderson and your race leader Adam Wilk who's disappearing towards his first Speed Week E-Series trophy. Craig's pushing so hard to get the pace out of this car. You can see, you know, just locking up, missing apexes unfortunately, but when he does get it right, he seems to catch it real quickly again. Oh, snap sideways out of the dipper and now down towards Forest Elbow. 
lap two of three. It's a split round here in the final round of the Speed Week E-Series. Powered by Gran Turismo Sport and PlayStation 4. It's a series that's had a bit of everything this year, hasn't it? It definitely has, and it's, you know, again, it's a pleasure to watch, you know, and again, looking at Woodsy race, uh, from seeing it from the outside, seeing how aggressive he is, how that car moves around. Let's know what it's like to race against him too. Touches that curb on the inside. It just unsettles the car for a moment. As into the final turn comes Josh Anderson. Solid in the back half of this series. He's really gotten used to driving these simulators. Transitioning from the Aussie racing car into the Mercedes-Benz. No easy feat. No, it definitely isn't. And you can see his lines. His lines are actually really good. His brake modulation is really good as well. So he's, he has picked it up, like you said. He's, he's come a long way. And he is the, the fastest pro racer too. I noticed the wheel work between the two drivers then. He's a bit more aggressive at the wheel. Woodsy looks like he's just on a Sunday drive. I'm sure it's not though. <laughs> well, we don't know what happens with Woodsy. He does uh, surprise us many times. But you know, looking at that, that entry then, looks like Josh braked just a little bit too late, holding onto the brake a bit too late, and you know, a bit of understeer and a sloppy exit. Into the cutting, just with Anderson. Oh, a bit of a messy approach to the top. Now he climbs the shelf here at Mount Panorama Bathurst. The final lap of this season's Speed Week E-Series. You're watching Joseph D. Jesus, who fell down the field after contact at Hell Corner, but again, has righted that wrong and moved up into fourth position. It's very impressive to see Joseph come back through the field after his, uh, his start of the race, and uh, he's got his sights on Chelsea. Oh, he goes to the move, and McPhillamy, and Chelsea slams the door shut. Ambitious move from the BMW driver. Chelsea's not going to give up this podium position without a fight. But Chelsea had her right away there, I believe. You know, the move was potentially on, but not enough in my book. He's got another chance down here if he dives down the inside at Forest Elbow. Won't be able to do it this time, but tucking behind the slipstream for this one kilometre ride down Conrad Strait for the final time. Battle for the final podium position between Angelo and De Jesus, while Adam Wilk and Josh Anderson are on their way down towards the chase. Chelsea didn't get a good run out of the Forest Elbow then. Might pay the price for it here. The BMW sweeps on by, and De Jesus is third. Oh, leaves the door open, almost taunting Angelo. Meantime, Adam Wilk will come out of the final turn to win this year's Speed Week E-Series. Season number two has been about the Mustang from start to finish and does it by a comprehensive margin. He was a GT Academy National Finalist back in 2015. He was an FIA Gran Turismo World Championship Finalist in 2018 and now has the Speed Week E-Series next to his name. What a season for Adam Wilk. Unbelievable effort from Adam. I mean, how do I race this guy? I want to be part of this series myself. Just dominated in qualifying and now has wrapped up this year's Speed Week E-Series. $5,000 richer as well. And well done to everybody in that final race. Josh Anderson holds down another second position. De Jesus the fourth, claims the final podium of the season. Angelo fourth, back to Woods, Talbot, Anthony Huey, and Gopi Mahandajit finishing in eighth position off the circuit. But well done to our series champion, Adam Wilk. We got through turn one okay, and then um, uh, Josh had a good run on me uh, up Mountain Straight. So I covered him into turn two, and once he was behind me, just managed the gap to him. He, he did race very well, so he kept me honest. Yeah, no, it wasn't too bad. Um, just had some unfortunate accidents in the last two races, so yeah, I just did what I could. It's pretty interesting. There was a bit of action going on in the first lap, and yeah, it was, I think I didn't have the pace of of Adam, um, and then I was pretty straightforward until I, I made a mistake at the second last corner. Solid third place for Josh Anderson in this year's Speed Week E Series. Adam Wilk, your champion, by a decent margin in the end to De Jesus the fourth. Gopi Mahindajit was back there in fourth position. The pro gamers and the pro drivers really started to level up. Josh Anderson winning the pro drivers, and Adam Wilk, your champion and the pro gamer champion. It feels amazing. It's been a great competition with some great drivers, and we put on some great racing, I hope. And it feels great to be come out on top. And there's a big season on Gran Turismo Sport. Um, and I'll be battling Joseph and other fast Aussies on the sim races. So I hope to see them out there. Yeah, I'll probably continue some sim racing. Uh, I'll be challenging for the FIA Championships this year. So hopefully you can represent Australia for that one as well. Yeah, it was awesome fun. Got to meet some you know, real pro drivers and also the other, other games as well. So it was a real fun experience. Yeah, it was good. It was good to compare myself against the guys who are always playing Gran Turismo. I actually went better than what I thought I would. 
It was cool to actually um, know that I came second against the pros. There's a lot of good pro gamers here as well as pro race car drivers, so to be able to compete against them was great. I absolutely love the series. It uh, genuinely felt like I was in an actual real life race car and it was like trying to get the win and trying to get a position and just ultimately struggled with the uh, handling of the Porsche, unfortunately, but uh, that's all right. Come back next time and have a better go. Some real great feedback from this Speed Week E-Series, Pro Gamer versus Pro Driver. Justin Ruggia, it's racing, it's racing, isn't it? It definitely is, and you can see, you know, if we use Adam as a benchmark, his consistency showed through the whole series. Josh, once he got used to the, the car, the feeling, then he started making inroads. But, uh, you know, look, as you said, racing, racing definitely is. If you want to win, you need to be different. Well done to Adam Wilk, who wraps up this year's Speed Week E-Series crown powered by Gran Turismo Sport and PlayStation 4. Season 3 comes up later in the year. For Justin Ruggia, I'm Matt Nolte. We'll see you next time.